We are the lab doctors. I'm Amanda. I'm Dorothy. And I'm Zhao Yong. We are biomedical researchers who realise we still have a lot to learn about science. So why not join us on this quest? Hey guys, welcome back to the Lab Doctors podcast. On this episode of Today We Learn, we will ask the questions as to why some animals exist. In case you forgot, Today We Learn episodes are the ones where we figure out questions based on our existing knowledge. But stay tuned for part two, where we regroup after researching and tell you what we have learned. Okay, so why did this question come about? Basically, you know, we live in Singapore. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the most annoying animals that everyone can agree on is mosquitoes. Yeah, definitely. And they just feed on our blood, make it, make it itchy, and then like spread mosquito-borne diseases. Mm. Yeah, like dengue and... So... I, I don't know. I mean, to me, my idea is that all animals exist for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but but that so that's why there's diversity and there's something called natural natural selection, which maybe yeah. we'll define for now. Yeah. Because we might touch on it later. So I guess the idea is mainly that all animals that exist now are actually selected for by the environment, right? So that's why they exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? So what exactly is natural selection? So we know that the environment can provide for a lot of different selection pressures. In this case, it can be temperature, food sources, water sources, um, predators, mm-hmm. or even yeah, availability of prey. Yeah. Yeah, right? So all of these act as a selection pressure onto individuals within a population and the individuals with the traits that is best fitted for the environment or... or to survive is, in yeah, the environment. Yeah, they would be able to reproduce and pass down their traits to their offspring, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's why um, in a pop- particular population, under a particular type of selection pressure, slowly certain traits would be favoured over other traits and mm-hmm. then you'll get a population that's suited for the environment. La. So that's why natural selection is kind of termed survival of the fittest Survival theory. of the fittest. Yeah, but fittest in this particular case doesn't necessarily mean strongest. It just means most suited for the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very important note to make that it doesn't necessarily mean the strongest. Yeah. Because that's why diversity exists as well. Because Mm. it's not only one trait that makes you better suited for the environment. Yeah, yeah. There are several different traits which could help you survive in a certain environment. And it doesn't all have to be a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I guess back to our original questions. Why do mosquitoes even exist? Yeah. So the only thing that I know like that could possibly explain is that they are food sources to fishes. So I read this somewhere. So you know, like there's the food chain, right? Mm. Animals eat animals or insects, whatever. And, you know, if you get rid of an entire population of an animal, for example, if you eradicate mosquitoes from the world, Mm -hmm. then maybe the fishes would die and then there'll be chain effects. You cannot fish. Maybe humans would die or like things that eat fishes, like maybe alligators or something. (laughs) Would There'll be a snowballing effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why there is still mosquitoes still exist because... It's a food source. Yeah. (laughs) Population There's a demand for it. Need... (laughs) Needed to survive. But <laughs> I think... I, Anything else? I don't know. I watched a documentary or um, read something somewhere because I was very annoyed in mosquitoes at one point in time. For some reason, mosquitoes <laughs> really loved is. my blood. Oh, I remember when goodness. I went to OBS in Sec 2, I think I got 52 bites. I, I had dengue before. Yeah. That's like... All the bad experiences I don't know when I would die. Amanda, anything. Well, every time I walk um, when it's dark out, yeah. so in the evening or at night, I get eaten by mosquitoes. I can't stand still in an yeah, yeah, open yeah. place because yeah. I will just get eaten. So I either keep walking or I have to go inside because it's so annoying. And actually, the fact that we're talking about it now makes me feel kind of itchy. I don't know if you all have that, <laughs> that reaction. You know, like when you when someone says yawn, you feel like yawning. Yeah. When people talk about mosquitoes, I kind of feel... Oh, is my leg itchy? Is it because of a mosquito bite? Or is it because... Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, bad experience with mosquitoes. But okay, so my question is, if fishes eat mosquitoes, aren't there other food sources for these fishes? There are, right? I, I, I guess there would be, but I just... Yeah. Th- that's why I don't know. Yeah, I think still I still think it's useless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As in, so, no, but that's the thing about the food chain and food web, right? If one source disappears, then they would overpredate on other sources and that's uh, what right, right, affects right. the entire chain. Yes. But oh, the issue okay. with this is I read 
or watched a documentary about mosquitoes and apparently some researchers said that if the whole mosquito population was wiped out from the face of the earth, mm-hmm. it wouldn't really affect the ecological oh, systems. Really? <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. I agree that maybe it would have an impact on the food chain for sure. But yeah. apparently it just won't be so significant that it would destabilize <laughs> the world or something. Yeah. It would definitely improve the lives of many people. Yeah, exactly. So why do you think they exist? I think they exist because they are fitted for the environment. What? <laughs> yeah, they are. If you think about it, they just need, I think, like a 20 cent coin size droplet of water yeah. is enough for it to reproduce. And at places, especially in Singapore, where it's very dense in population, mm. it's just very easy for it to reproduce. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what about pandas? Oh, why do pandas exist? Yeah, pandas, I mean, it's just another animal which we think is useless. <laughs> Other than them being super cute and I mean, rolly cute. and stuff. Yeah, which is the point. They roll around <laughs> and then they bang their heads against so many different things and then they just fall constantly. And they just keep eating. Yeah. Why are they still alive? Would it have gone extinct because of humans or is it because it's just not fitted? You know, the environment doesn't select for it at all. I don't what know. What do you think? I, I don't know. I mean, to me, like pandas, they just they just keep eating. Yeah. And you know when pandas are born, they are so small, right? Yeah. They're mm. like the size of a mice, yeah. a mouse. And then like they grow so big. So imagine how much energy like they get from the food they eat. Like how much is gone apparently, to feeding pandas. Yeah, apparently bamboo isn't that nutritious also, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I read somewhere that it, it doesn't really um give them all the nutrients yeah. that they need. <laughs> but then like... They just eat that? Yeah. Uh, why? So they eat a lot of it, right? I guess if you just leave the pandas in a bamboo forest, they might survive. Uh-huh. I don't know. Maybe there are no predators in a bamboo forest. Do you think they're too big to have a uh, predator? I think that's one of the reasons. Or they look funny, like just black and white. I, that's the thing. Are they not seeable? Like Is this black and visible? white? <laughs> Is this black and white feature people? very advantageous in the natural world? Because... So you know how zebras are, or zebras, I, I don't really zebras, know how to I would say yeah, zebra. But they are black and white and that's because there's this new natural advantage of them camouflaging with grass or something in, in the mm. savannas, right? But then Wait, for, why? Because they are striated in pattern and it's random. So it kind of gives them this camouflage advantage, oh, right? Oh, okay, okay, but okay. pandas okay. are like black and white. Like the most obvious, very conspicuous <laughs> place around their eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As in, okay, maybe the eyes are black because that makes it bigger. Oh, yeah, and it makes it bigger. Yes. Yeah. Mm. But then why not just grow bigger? It's <laughs> <laughs> a limit to how big things can be. <laughs> I, so, yeah. But that, I mean, that's the, the, the funny part about natural selection uh, because if you have dark spots around your eyes that make your eyes bigger and scare off predators or potential predators, then you don't really need bigger eyes. So, Do you have any other reason why pandas exist? Human conservation. <laughs> yeah. I think. It's, it's other than humans which, are, which affect like everything, yeah. including ourselves. It's just the idea of charismatic megafauna. So new term. What new term is that? Yeah, what so chim it's, term is that? it's just a, a, I think a sociological term where big animals that are cute tend to attract attention and then they tend to attract funding for conservation for those animals. But there's also a separate effect where it, it brings more attention towards conservation itself. So that's why even though it's not particularly a useful animal, it's useful in the sense that it helps conserve other animals as well. <laughs> Sounds so like, what do you call it? Like... For a bigger cause. Yeah. They sound so useful. Yeah, but I mean, that's why it's the whole uh, World Wildlife Fund's main mascot, right? Pandas. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. So so that's pandas, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know why they exist. <laughs> yeah. Any other animals? Any other animals you can think of that are useless? Um, I, I, I want to say oysters. Or, like, you know, generally oysters. shell-based. Shell. Fish? Shellfish? 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 No, some are useful, but oysters, they just produce pearls. That's all I know, right? Wait, don't they filter water as well? Is Are oysters the one that filters water? they all filter water because that's how they feed, mm. right? Uh-huh. They filter feed. They suck in everything so in the water. So does it make the water cleaner? Is that what filtering water like means? Like the, o- <laughs> the ocean? Does it make the ocean cleaner? I don't know because that's how they make pearls, right? They, yeah, they yeah. filter in sand and then they compact I it, thought, is it? I, I thought I'm that one is sure. just like, if a sand goes into them, just then they right? coat it to protect themselves, not yeah, to yeah, protect yeah. the environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a by chance thing. Yeah, uh, so yeah. that's like, you know, accidental and then yeah. you get a pretty thing. Yeah. But like, <laughs> oysters, the filtering part, I, I, I don't know. 
And, and, and I guess that's the question. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. How did they come about? Mm. Which again, that's the thing about natural selection. It's not about survival of the fittest. It's just survival of, of the fittest for, for that, that environment. Is right? it because like they, they are covered in the shell so they can survive? I mean, like, do any fish or sea animals Otters, eat? right? Otters, have otters? you watched the videos of otters trying to break open all really? these shells? Really? I, I never bivalves, seen it. Bivalves? I, bivalves. Yeah, yeah, bivalves. Yeah. yeah, it's not oysters in particular, but shellfish. Oh, okay. Yeah, like clams or can't remember. Question, oysters, do they move? <laughs> I don't think so. So how do they reproduce? <laughs> you know like Spongebob, they are the birds in the ocean. Because they, can <laughs> they just open, open and, and close, close the, yeah. the shell and they can swim. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, so, but I don't think they move. Okay, but I'm not too sure about their reproductive capacities. But talking about moving things, mm. sloths mm-hmm. they move so slowly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't know which is slower, sloth or snail. But like the mm. sloths move so slowly, mm-hmm. and what are they for? No, but that's the thing. They are slow movement is what actually gives them that advantage, right? So why then, no predators don't really notice yeah. them. Because if oh. you're moving fast, it you catch it out of the corner of your yeah. eye. Whereas if you move slowly, it's like trees. Yeah. Uh uh uh. They okay. are basically trying to emulate trees. Yeah. And in the objects. <laughs> the other thing is also because they move so slowly and they don't really move often, so they don't really use a lot of energy. Also, oh, they don't need a lot of food. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Oh. So it's the same compared as, to pandas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just roll around all day. <laughs> I, we sound like we hate pandas. We oh, don't. No, I they're just so cute. <laughs> yes. But they are really useless to me. <laughs> Very confusing why they exist. I mean, they give people jobs, which is great. And yeah. like, they generate the economy because yeah. people go to the For zoo. And like, <laughs> Especially, I guess. <laughs> but uh, And you sell panda toys. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cute. But <laughs> I have a lot of panda toys. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So I guess to wrap it all up, so there are a few animals that we kind of talked about, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are more that people can think of, but these are just a few that we were interested in. Yeah. If you are interested in this, I guess you can let us know what other animals we can talk about and then we'll do a part two to this TWL. Yeah. Part two. Yep. Yep. So just Mm -hmm. to recap, our questions for today are why do mosquitoes exist? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. why do pandas exist? Yeah. And also, uh, we'll also try to cover oysters and sloths if there's time. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to part two of why some animals exist. So we went back and we did our research. And so now we're going to tell you what we found. The first question is, why do mosquitoes exist? Okay, so I was actually kind of right. Like, I remember what I read last time, that mosquitoes exist because they are just basically food sources to other animals in the food chain. So, for example, the mosquito larvae is for fish and the adult flies are food for frogs, birds and bats. Interestingly, I found out also that mosquitoes are pollinators. As in, they pollinate flowers. Yeah. Huh? I didn't know. Okay, so what you know. Flowers? <laughs> <laughs> so, only the female mosquitoes suck blood. Uh-huh, the males, yeah. what do they do, right? So, oh, the true, males true, pollinate true. flowers mm-hmm. when they feed from flower to flower. So, the common plants that they feed, uh, that they pollinate, are co- orchids and goldenrod. The irony mm-hmm. is that goldenrod is the flower that causes hay fever, which is allergic rhinitis, which is like the one that you get runny nose and uh. irritation in your upper airway. Mm-hmm. So it's actually fine if they die. <laughs> 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 if these flowers die. Yeah. So again, mosquitoes are not that useful. Huh. Uh, okay. And actually, but you know, like only out of like 3,500 spe- uh, mosquito species, mm-hmm. only 400 transmit diseases. So like, we were saying, you know, we hate mosquitoes because they mm. not only suck our blood, they also transmit diseases like dengue, Zika, uh, what other? <laughs> dengue, <laughs> so many Zika, others. Malaria, malaria. Yes, malaria. malaria. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, a lot of these mosquitoes, they prefer other animals, or other species such as like horses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whilst oh, they are so right. irritating to us, there's so many more that are They're not... They're so irritating to everyone else. I mean, like, every other, other animal. <laughs> so. 
Okay, what about pandas? Okay, so I think there, are f- there were a few questions that we had, right? Like, firstly, why do pandas have such weird patterns? It mm. doesn't really make sense. And also, why do they exist given that they are so stupid? <laughs> um, but cute. cute yes. But cute, but cute, yeah. So I think I'll start with um, their food sources and the way that they eat. So firstly, we know that pandas eat bamboo, right? Yeah. And it's not only any kind of bamboo it's particularly bamboo sprouts which is the the baby the baby form of bamboo <laughs> that's actually uh-huh. not very nutritious mm-hmm. oh. and, and so that's why they really need to eat quite a lot of it about four times their weight that's what? why they're always eating yeah they're always eating because it's just because n- of their crappy digestion yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> crappy <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> and um, their digestive system is just not primed to do it. So, in fact, um, a lot of studies have found that pandas are, I mean, naturally have digestive systems that are relatively short, that is more characteristic of carnivores and omnivores, which uh-huh. is similar to ours. You know, like how in a previous episode, we mentioned that cows have four stomachs yeah. because they eat grass and grass needs a lot of processing. Uh-huh. Yeah, so most herbivores have longer uh, digestive tracts to help process plant material, whereas pandas don't. So actually, they just don't, take up I mean a lot of the nutrients and that's yeah, why again that's they need to eat so useless <laughs> why don't they eat something rich. else yeah so that's the question right so then studies were done to theorize on why pandas actually so much investment on, <laughs> on, on pandas <laughs> do they like the taste is that why they are eating bamboo sprouts yeah so not much is known. <laughs> Still. There are only theories and it is what is na- it's also what we were discussing about previously about natural selection. Mm-hmm. So it was theorized that probably during ancient times there was this period of time where there was less prey for bears in general, whereas there's just this abundance of, of bamboo. And so mm. oh. uh, they adapted. It's more behavioral. Yeah. So they adapted to eating bamboo sprouts, which is just readily available. And then they compensated by just not moving as much. So they adapted <laughs> eating to eating a lot. So yeah, it's that a, point of time. But yeah. in this point of time, yeah. So um, the they would fail <laughs> if they were in the wild. But they're not in the wild. Usually they're con. Would they fail in the wild? I mean, like aren't there bamboo forests that no one uh-huh. goes to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they are in the wild, and conservation efforts have actually pulled pandas out of the endangered. But they are still oh. they're still considered and. Risk, At risk, if I'm not wrong. Uh. Yeah. So conservation efforts for pandas have really helped them. But I think what we do need to remember is firstly, why they are going endangered and why they are going extinct is because of humans in general clearing their natural habitat. Right. Yeah. So we are just not giving them enough time to be selected for <laughs> and they just go extinct. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, so that's something that we always need to remember, even though we think that pandas are useless, but they were actually very well adapted for their environment. environment. Yeah. yeah. What about their color? Yeah, so for their color, again, it's just a whole bunch of theories because <laughs> we're not entirely sure. But why I wanted to go into their uh, diet first is because pandas eat bamboo sprouts, which is not very nutritious, if we mm-hmm. have established. So they can't store enough food for hibernation. So they should just become skinnier. They are so fluffy <laughs> and fat. <laughs> So, oh yeah, so apparently they're not that fat. Really? Yeah, it's just very fluffy. But yeah, um, <laughs> Should shave a panda ball and <laughs> see. <laughs> yeah, um, but pandas, unlike other bears, they don't hibernate. So they tend to go out and look for food even in the winter. So oh. you, there is argument to say that, you know, they are kind of hardworking yeah. because they don't hibernate. But also because they can't hibernate as well. <laughs> Yeah, mm. so that's why there's a lot of white patterns, especially at the upper parts of the body, um, mm-hmm. so that it can blend with the snowy landscapes. And then why, oh. yeah, why I'm um, black nearer to their feet is because the vegetation on the ground is typically more blackish. And the ears? So, oh wait, what's black? The eyes. Yeah, so the eyes and ears, right, are also black, and that is because it is used more for communication with predators and also other pandas that are around. Uh-huh. So their ears can flick apparently. To, to oh, help them so cute. communicate and again like what we mentioned the eyes so they are blacker to be bigger, bigger. And, mo- and seem more aggressive yeah so that's pandas again well adapted for their environment but because of human intervention their habitat is being decreased their population is decreasing and that's why they seem useless to us but it's largely our fault la, I would have to say mm. Mm. yeah so I think another lazy animal that we wanted to talk about was the sloths and 
Oh my goodness, it's so crazy because the sloths are so different from the pandas. Uh So one of the things that we said why sloth still exists is because they move slowly, right? So it's like some animals, like monkeys, they opt to move swiftly through the forest, you know, so they can escape predators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sloths opt for a totally different strategy. They try to be invisible. So, <laughs> that sounds so dumb. Yeah, so they, so, so they move very slowly to avoid being detected by their predators, which is generally birds of prey, so oh. eagles. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and all these um, birds of prey, like eagles, they detect their prey by visual movement cues. Oh. So if the sloth moves slow enough, there will be no visual cue uh-huh. for the predator to detect them. Oh. Yeah, and I didn't know cute. that eagles prey on sloths. Yeah, so they are... Almost the same size, aren't they? It I says sh- it's a harpy eagle. I don't know if that's an eagle that is like bigger. Oh. Uh, yeah. Harpy. Does it play the harp? Is it spelled like that? Yeah. <laughs> aren't harpies like mythological half human, half bird? I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe they're big then. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, in contrast to pandas, another reason why moving slows works to the sloth's advantage is that they require less energy, right? Mm-hmm. So because of this, they are more energy efficient, so yes. to say. And instead of having a very inefficient digestive tract, mm-hmm. the sloth has a very slow and extensive digestion. So the sloth is able to extract every last nutrient out of the food that they eat. So they don't wow. have to... Compared to pandas. Yeah. <laughs> and they eat leaves. Yeah. Uh-huh. So they don't have to keep scavenging or like finding leaves. Yeah. They can just eat a bit of leaves. Anyway, and they don't expend much energy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on top of not expending much energy, their digestive tract is just very well adapted for yeah. eating very little. Uh-huh. And they only have to poop like every seven to ten days. So... <laughs> Do they just... <laughs> hang and just no poop on <laughs> so apparently they go to the ground <laughs> to poop oh and so scientists much believe, there. <laughs> yeah which is why they can't do it often because <laughs> there's there's too much movement uh-huh. and scientists believe that why they do so instead of just dropping their poop from the trees uh-huh. is it's considered maybe a mating ritual that's how they meet each other <laughs> by going that's down so on the cute. ground to poop yeah I mean that's, that's is it like fate cause they go down so like not often I it's like know. oh if I meet you below you're fated for me oh. <laughs> I don't know I don't know so that's what they theorize uh-huh. again it's all theories cause yeah. you're just observing animals in the wild Yeah. so just one more thing besides moving slowly and having mm-hmm. a good digestive tract is they actually um, have a symbiotic relationship with algae uh-huh. algae yeah. algae I say algae, algae. Uh, whatever yeah. we all say it differently <laughs> yeah. anyway algae so if you remember from secondary school biology symbiosis is just a biological interaction between two organisms yeah. so um, the algae grows on the sloth's fur oh right 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 yeah, yeah. which makes them because sloths are a bit brown yeah, yeah, yeah. but the algae makes them a bit green Greenish, uh-huh. so they can camouflage in the trees and everything uh. so these are I think these are the three main reasons that sloths still can survive even though they move slowly and mm. everything. Mm. That's cool. I just did a g- quick Google search. The harpy eagle is 99 cm in length. It's like a meter. Like wingspan? What? I, I don't know. They just said length on Wikipedia. Oh. <laughs> but actually, if it's wingspan, it's not that big, right? Yeah. But it must be really strong then. I don't know. Yeah, because sloths are not small. <laughs> okay, moving away from large animals, we also asked why do oysters exist? Okay. Mm. You know, when I was Googling on oysters, I felt so stupid. (laughs) Okay, basically, oysters actually have a very good reason why they live. So other than pearl versus non-pearl oysters, they are actually Mm. different. Oh. If you didn't already realize, which I didn't really realize, the oysters you eat probably don't don't make pearls. pearls. Oh. Yeah, it like only strike you now, right? (laughs) I feel so dumb reading this. But no questions are dumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pearl oysters are not true oysters. They belong to another group. Mm -hmm. True oysters have this muscle called a ductal muscle, Mm -hmm. which are the ones, you know, like when you peel off a scallop or something. Or an oyster, there's like something that's stuck to it. This helps them like close their shell. Mm. And uh, I mean, of course, oysters are useful because they produce pearls, right? So like humans like them. Yeah. And basically (laughs) when they produce, they produce pearls of different sizes and color because of foreign substances that enter them and they want to get rid of this Mm. by wrapping it. So they use this thing called nacre. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. N-A-C-R-E. 
and the color of their nacre, which is like some mucus-like mm-hmm. substance, would make the pearl a different color. Oh, so, I didn't know that pearls came in different colors. I don't know how many different colors. Maybe like white versus off-white. <laughs> 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 Mildly yeah. pink. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So other than that, the the true oysters, mm-hmm. maybe not true oysters, every, like all the oysters in general, they are like filter feeders. Mm-hmm. So they are vacuum cleaners of the ocean. Yeah. They mm-hmm. clean the ocean yeah. by removing particles such as plankton, algae. <laughs> <laughs> And this cleaner water is good for other species. Okay, yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. They also remove suspended solids from the water and pack them into bundles known as pseudo feces. <laughs> pseudo feces, so like fake. So I Google what is <laughs> yeah. I search what is <laughs> yes. pseudo feces. These are wrapped in mucus and expelled without passing through the digestive tract. That's why they are called pseudo feces. Mm. Uh. And these pseudo feces are used by other organisms in the oyster reef as food. Oh, what? They sound so <laughs> useful now. And um, okay, yeah. <laughs> not only that, there's one more reason. So the shells of these oysters, because they are very hard, right? They mm-hmm. provide a hard bottom substrate for other organisms in the bay mm-hmm. to attach to and live and grow. So yeah. like barnacles, mm-hmm. which are I, I always am scared of barnacles. They look horrible. Uh, mussels and yeah. anemones actually like need them to live and Mm -hmm. some species even use dead or empty oyster shells to lay their eggs because there is some substrate in the shell that they the eggs can attach to and also because the shell would protect their eggs from other species Mm. oh that's cool yeah oysters oysters are pretty useful yeah out of all the ones that we've listed (laughs) so far honestly yeah (laughs) we were wrong about oysters other than eating it yeah Yeah. (laughs) and giving us high cholesterol and giving us pearls oh pearls yes yeah cool I guess in closing like you Mm. know as much as we try to find out what different animals are for like what Zhao Yong said in the first part diversity is still important for us Mm -hmm. whilst we still don't know about animals why they exist I'm pretty sure they still exist for a reason Mm -hmm. that might not be known I mean some people um, hypothesize that even mosquitoes like you might find that they are useless now and people want to eradicate it but you never know like one day down the road you might find that there's something in them that can cure cancer or something Mm. so We should just let nature take its course. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Don't get rid of animals. (laughs) Yes. But you can kill the mosquitoes. (laughs) The mosquitoes around you. There's enough to kill it. (laughs) Yeah. If you can't kill it. Well, they've survived with human intervention, so I think they will continue to survive. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for listening. And as usual, remember to follow us on Spotify and subscribe on our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on our social medias on Instagram, Twitter, and even Facebook. Or you can DM us if you have any questions or email us at thelabdoctors at gmail.com. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.